The Detroit Pistons had played in three straight NBA Finals and won two championship rings. But the grind had taken a toll. And as the 1991 playoffs started, something felt different. For many years, Isaiah Thomas told me that the Pistons were this tightly wound ball of yarn. You could never get the end of it and start pulling on it. But we knew that in 1991, the strands were unwinding. Age caught up the Detroit Pistons in, in some ways. Injuries, it gets tiring. 87, 88, 89, 90, 91, like five straight years, you're playing until at least early June. It was just mental fatigue, physical fatigue. We had had a long run, and a lot of the things came crumbling down on us at that point. They managed to get back to the conference finals. And one more time, the Bulls were waiting. What time is it? Jordan was Jordan. He the best player on the planet. He just needed some help. And that 91 series, Scottie Pippen um, grew up. We had no answer for Michael or Scotty. I knew that we couldn't beat the Bulls. We couldn't beat him at all, no matter what we did. Beautiful backdoor pass for Pippen, and he is walloped. And that will be a flagrant foul. We were so much more mentally strong. We were so much more physically ready for any challenges that they threw at us. Scotty Pippen is just on fire. They weren't a fragile, mental, weak team anymore. You couldn't mentally fatigue them. They were obsessed with winning at that point. What it made me think about was us with Boston. I looked at them and said, they're us. The Bulls won the first three games and weren't shy about letting the press know how they felt about the bad boys. Today, Michael Jordan claims that the whole league will rejoice over the demise of the, the so-called bad boys. Strong words for Michael. I had never seen a team speak about a champion that they were getting ready to dethrone that way. When Michael Jordan said the Pistons were bad for basketball, they were poor champions. That struck the Pistons in the heart, struck Detroit in the heart. Isaiah Thomas is coming out of the game. Bill Lanevier ran off the bench to hug the teammate. When the run's over, you know it's over. And it was over for us. A new basketball king will be crowned. What we were doing was just giving respect to each other. As a brother who's been down with me in this struggle, in this battle, thank you. This is a very touching scene. They're almost breathing, I guess, a sigh of relief, carrying a heavy burden all season long. It's 112-89, Chicago, with a minute left in the Pistons' season. Our interest was really heightened in what was going on around the benches. That story was more important than anything was going to be going up and down that court. Everybody was waiting for the possibility of a true passing of the torch. And what they got was nothing like that at all. When the Pistons began to walk off the court, there was one problem. There was still time left on the clock. They left the bench, although there's seven and nine, ten seconds remaining. The Pistons just left. And the cameras were following them the whole way. Bill and Bill is walking all up like this, and Isaiah just dips around him. But the way it looked, it looked like Isaiah was trying not to be seen. Watching them walk by our bench and not even have the dignity to raise their head up, I don't even know if I would have shook their hands anyway. Great champions usually do the right thing. And these guys conducted themselves like streetyard bullies. Those who look at the Pistons as villains seeing it the correct end for a villain. The villain goes down. See, we never like them and look. When they don't win, look how they behave. The Pistons' reputation was cemented when they walked past them 
in 1991. Do you stand behind your statement then, Michael, that people around the league will rejoice that this is the end of dirty basketball? And I hope so, except for Detroit. I mean, uh, you, you saw what type of class they had in, in terms of walking off the court uh, in defeat. But, you know, that's them. That's their nature. We expected it. In the beginning of this series, you said they'd have won four straight. Nobody here would have believed that. They won. What did they do differently? They won. You knew someday it was going to come to an end. Did you think it would feel this way when you did? I mean, is this the way it's supposed to feel when you... They won. I'm not giving the Bulls no credit. The team walked off that afternoon. But as always, everything pointed back to the star who'd been the face of the Pistons since the day he was drafted 10 years earlier. What this team accomplished um, was history. It cost him. It cost him that he wasn't a beloved character in the history of the National Basketball Association. He should have been. The following summer, when the Dream Team dominated the Barcelona Olympics, Isaiah Thomas was left off the roster. And more than 20 years later, no one's forgotten what was seen as his final act. In my mind, the walk-off against Chicago Bulls was Isaiah Thomas's idea. It was engineered by Isaiah. Who's that you, was it? Oh, yeah, I was the one that was the instigator of walking off the court. Did it feel good doing that? Did it feel good for me? Absolutely. To me, it's not important whose idea it was. Um, we, we were a team, and um, that's what we did. And looking back on it, was it the right thing to do? Should we had been bigger? Yeah. The walk-off may have been controversial, but what wasn't up for debate was this. It was the end of the bad boys. You're up on top. Eventually, you're going to go down. But they were great soldiers. It had taken Jack McCloskey 10 years and 38 trades to build a championship team. After the 1991 season, the demolition began. If the rise was ugly, the breakup had to be ugly, too. There was just no pretty way to uh, say goodbye to the bad boys. Over the next few years, the team's aging veterans were dealt away. And Chuck Daly and Trader Jack himself headed out the door as well. Everything was falling apart. I built my life here in Detroit. I built my life with this team and Chuck Daly. Once I knew that was gone, I, I, I pretty much I just went rebellious quick. Rodman, of course, had a second NBA life ahead of him in Chicago, of all places. As for the heart and soul of the bad boys, the end of their story was almost too fitting. I set a big hard screen on Isaiah in practice, and he didn't like it, and they ended up taking a swing and hitting me in the head. It broke his hand, unfortunately, for the team. But that just was another example of how the time had passed, and it was time to, to go and move on. Lambeer retired in the beginning of the 93-94 season. Then, in the last home game of that year, Isaiah tore his Achilles. He was done at just 32 years old. I had zero left to give. Mind, body, spirit, soul. I felt like I had given everything that, that I could give, and I I didn't have anything left. Joe Dumar stuck around the longest till 1999, which meant he was around to watch Jordan and the Bulls win all six of their titles. Jordan to drive, hang, fire, yes! scores! He scores! Guess what, people? The Michael Jordan that we know, the exalted ruler of the NBA, he wouldn't have happened if not for the Pistons. You can't carry that type of anger or grudge for the rest of your life. And the team pushed us to a certain level. I don't think we would have won those six championships without getting over that hump of Detroit. A lot of time has passed since the bad boys ruled the NBA. 
but Detroit is never going to forget any of them, especially the Hall of Fame coach who passed away in 2009 at the age of 78. Still, when you open the history books, there's no way you can miss them. Many people call that the golden era for the NBA, Magic Bird Michael, all in the NBA at the same time. And for two brief, shining years, there was a team that was a team from a most unlikely city with a most unlikely cast that interrupted the glamour party that was going on in the NBA during those years. And they did it in a tough way that made people uncomfortable. We can't make people uncomfortable anymore. But back then, they didn't care. This is who we are. You take us or leave us. Through it all, being remembered never seemed to matter to them. Only winning did. But that doesn't mean they didn't change the game. Arguably the best defense we have ever seen in the National Basketball Association, the Detroit Pistons. Defense, teamwork, rules. The basketball world looked at all of them differently after these guys. It would be hard to find a march to a title that was tougher, more painful, and more rewarding. It would be hard to find a team that was bonded so tightly together. But more than anything else, there's one thing you have to remember about the bad boys. If you still can't stand them, still don't respect them, well, guess what? They don't give a...